I found out about my wife's affair when the police called to ask about her partner. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know if this is the right sub or even if I should be posting this, but I don't have a clear mind right now and I'm here to ask for some direction. I've been married to my wife for 12 years. We have an amazing 11-year-old son. Until last night, I thought we had a good marriage. I thought I was always really good to her. We have no money problems, no intimacy problems, and I have never taken her for granted. I honestly wake up every morning and thank God she is my wife. Now I don't know what to think. I got a call from my local PD as I was getting off work yesterday. They asked if I could come to the police station as soon as possible. I panicked. I asked if something had happened to my wife or son, but they said not to worry, just get to the station ASAP. When I got there, they put me in a room with a table and some chairs. They asked me my name, which I gave. Then they started asking all these questions about a guy my wife works with. I haven't seen or spoken to this guy literally since December 2019 at my wife's company Christmas party. The two officers kept asking me things like, how long have you known? And how did you find out? The only answer I could give was, what are you talking about? After about an hour of this, I just stopped answering their questions and kept asking where my son and wife were and whether they were safe. We just kept going around and around until after about two hours, on and off because they would periodically leave the room for 15 to 20 minutes, then come back and start it all over again like some cheap cop show. The last time they came in, the cop handed me a tablet and showed me a video of my wife and the guy from her work having sex. I don't remember much right after that. I just remember screaming, what the F asterisk 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 is this? Over and over again. I had a full-blown panic attack right there in the middle of the police station. The police had a paramedic check me out, and he said my blood pressure was something like 170 over 110. He wanted me to go to the hospital, but I refused and said I needed to find my wife and my son. After I calmed down, the officers explained that the guy in the video had been having an affair with my wife and apparently several other women. He had been found that morning in his driveway, beaten, raped, and set on fire. He was still alive but in critical condition, and they didn't know if he would make it. His wife had given them permission to go through his phone and computer, and that's where they found the video of my wife. They asked me where I was that morning, and I told them the gym, then work, about 10 minutes from my gym. At that point, they said I could go, but that I might not want to stay at my house because they didn't know if his affair with my wife could be why he was attacked. They also said my wife wasn't the only person he was having an affair with. That's when I rushed home. My son was staying with our neighbors, so I got him and went home. We packed some clothes and his laptop for school. I grabbed my gun and we headed to my parents' house 45 minutes away. I still haven't heard from my wife. Her phone is going straight to voicemail. I've called the officer who gave me his card, and he said she is at the hospital with the guy she's been cheating with. I am sitting here in bed with my son on one side of me, and my .38 on the other. My dad is sleeping in his chair in the living room with a shotgun across his lap, and I've not slept in over 30 hours. I don't even know where to start. Anything would be helpful right now. Any advice or ideas? I am in a fog. Edit. Just got off the phone with my in-laws. Apparently, my wife just checked herself into the psych ward. Update. I'm completely lost because I just found out that my wife, 36F, of 12 years has been having an affair from the police who called me in for questioning involving the assault of her lover. I attempted to post this on Saturday at 1219, but it didn't go through, and I got blocked from reposting because I asked a yes slash no question. Anyway, here it is again. I am working a bit, so I may not be able to reply that much right now. My original post was removed, but a lot of people messaged me and asked for an update. I thought I would fill everyone in on what has happened this week because the replies I got helped me so much. I really feel like I owe this community a big thank you for helping me get my head on straight and pointed me in the right direction to get everything done as fast as possible. For those people who said my post was fake, my only reply is, I wish from the bottom of my heart it was. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. For those who said they couldn't find a new story, Apparently due to the nature of the attack, a lot of information was withheld. Even our local news outlets only reported it as an assault, and it was nothing more than a blurb on our nightly news. For those who implied or directly stated the police wouldn't do that, you are 100% wrong because they did. I found out from my lawyer that police can literally do or say anything they want, especially if you aren't under arrest. Short of direct threats of harm, that includes lying directly to your face, which they did. It turns out my wife wasn't at the hospital with her lover. When I contacted the detective, she had been admitted to that hospital psychiatric facility much earlier in the day while he was still in surgery. I don't know why they would lie about that, but they did. Needless to say, this situation has caused me to become very suspicious of law enforcement. After I woke up that afternoon, 
I contacted my uncle's law partner, who was a family friend. He actually came to my parents' house and sat down with me to go over my options. His entire law firm is now representing me, both in the divorce and criminal defense. That day, Sunday, he got me an emergency custody order and a protective order against my wife for me, my son, and my parents. Our court date is in 60 days. The police served her on Monday as she was leaving the psych hospital. According to her brother, who is a close personal friend of mine, she did not take it well. She is staying with her parents for the time being. I still haven't talked to her, and she hasn't made any attempt to speak to me either. Whether that's due to shame, indifference, or the order of protection, I don't know. But I'm glad of it all the same. My wife is not the person I thought she was, and I'm ashamed of myself for not seeing it sooner. I had to tell my son something, so I decided to tell him the truth, age appropriate. And literally, the first words out of his mouth were, please don't let mommy take me away. I asked him why he would say that, and from what he tells me, my wife has been treating him very badly when I wasn't around. She told him if he told me, she would take him away, and my son would never see me again. She has been emotionally torturing our son, and I was too blind to see it. That wrecked me more than the video, to be honest. I told the lawyer about what my son said, and he used my son's statement and her mental state and commitment to get the emergency custody. I have contacted his school for therapy resources, and he will start therapy after the first of the year. I feel like the worst father to ever walk the face of the earth at this point. As for our families, her parents contacted me Tuesday and asked to come see us. I was still at my parents at the time, and I told them they could come, but she was not allowed anywhere near us. They agreed. They were so apologetic, and her poor mother didn't stop crying the entire time she was with us. Her father was heartbroken and kept referring to my wife as that girl. They both said they felt like something was going on with her, and they did not raise her to be this way. We hugged and cried before they left, and I told them they will always be a part of our lives no matter what happens with the divorce. After what my son told me, their visit was the hardest part of our whole ordeal. My lawyers have been doing amazing work so far. They found out that the man my wife was sleeping with has a long criminal record. One of the lawyers informed me that when they went to print out the guy's arrest record, the printer ran for five minutes straight. From what they could learn, he is currently on parole for substance offenses and has had gang affiliations in the past. He is still alive but in critical condition and still may not make it. The firm has an investigator who contacted the co-worker who drove my wife to the hospital. The co-worker informed them that my wife's affair was an open secret around the office. My lawyers think that's how the police figured out who I was and who my wife was in the video. There are several photos of last year's Christmas party at her work and my wife and I are in several of them. That's where I currently am in this whole situation. I am just numb, still lost, and heartbroken. How long does the numbness last? And is there any way to get past this emotional lethargy faster? I mean, really numb, like a dream. Everything I've just said has felt like it's happening to someone else. Update. I'm completely lost because I just found out that my 42M wife, 36F of 12 years, has been having an affair from the police who called me in for questioning involving the assault of her lover. I will start off again by saying thank you to everyone who replied to both my original post and my update. This sub really did help me so much. If I didn't respond to you directly, I'm sorry, but I got so many messages I can't keep up with them all. First, my son is doing so much better. He started therapy the first week of Jan, and the difference is already noticeable. I asked him if he felt comfortable with me talking to his therapist, and he said yes, so I've had a few discussions with her. According to the therapist, my SDBX would verbally and emotionally abuse our son whenever they were alone together. He was not allowed to make noise or bother her in any way. When he was home, she would leave him alone for hours on end and even overnight if I was out of town. She would then threaten him with being taken away and never see me again if he told me or anyone else. The therapist said this has made him feel powerless and dependent in a time in his development that she should actually be feeling empowered and self-reliant. So, to that end, I have bought him his own phone and helped him memorize family members' phone numbers and as many addresses as are relevant. I've also been teaching him situational awareness to pay attention to street names and how to read addresses on buildings. We've also role-played how to ask people for help, how he can clearly explain to strangers that he's in trouble and doesn't feel safe. I know this may sound silly, but my son can be a bit introverted and shy when he doesn't feel comfortable. Even though we've only been doing this for a few weeks, I can see that it's really building his confidence. Any suggestions on how to continue to build his self-reliance would be really helpful. His safety and well-being are still my number one concern right now. As for myself, I'm doing as good as can be expected. I started therapy around the same time as my son, and although I don't speak to my therapist as much as he does, 
It has helped to be able to talk through my thoughts and feelings about everything that has happened to us and our family. The numbness is gone, but it was replaced by a white-hot ball of anger in the pit of my stomach whenever I think of my SDBX and what she's put our family through. Funny enough, although I hate feeling angry, it's a lot easier to deal with than the numbness. My therapist says this is part of the grieving process, and it's not how we feel but how we channel those emotions that matter. My legal situation, well, I'll be honest, is the scariest thing I've ever dealt with in my life. I was awarded temporary full custody and child support, which I didn't want, but my lawyer pretty much demanded we ask for, as well as a continuation of the order of protection for myself and my son. At the request for an order hearing, which neither my wife nor her lawyer showed up to, the judge asked if we would allow supervised visitation, but my son absolutely refused, which was why my lawyer told me to bring him along. The judge asked my son if he would speak to him alone, and he agreed. The judge, stenographer, and a child welfare officer went into chambers with my son and met for about 10 minutes. After their meeting, the judge granted the temp orders and ordered therapy and psychological evaluation for my son. Luckily, the therapist he is seeing is somehow involved with or accredited to work with the court, so he doesn't have to see another therapist. My lawyer said this is a good thing because it means his therapist can give a recommendation for custody, but it still scares the hell out of me that she could get some form of custody after what she put him through. As for the AP, I don't know much. From what my lawyers have gathered, he's alive but still in the hospital. I haven't heard from the police since my initial interview, so nothing new to report there. As for my SDBX, I still hadn't seen her since the day I was questioned until Thursday. She has attempted to call me a few times, but I haven't answered, and when she called from another number, I hung up immediately. I have nothing to say to her, and I don't want to hear anything she has to say to me. Her lawyer requested a preliminary hearing for our court-appointed mediation. She was served the second week of January. She was there with her lawyer, and I know this will sound petty, but even with the mask, she looked bad. My SDBX was always an attractive and athletic woman. I swear in our wedding photos, she looks like a supermodel, but now, she's lost so much weight it's disturbing. She looked sick and frail. She didn't even look at me. She just sat with her face down through most of the meeting. Long story short, everything they asked for was ridiculous. They wanted visitation during the divorce proceedings and shared custody after. They want us to drop the opies. She wants to cohabitate until the divorce is finalized. I'm not joking. After all this, she wants to live in the same house. It was so insulting that my head throbbed through the whole meeting, but it was all worth it for the big reveal we gave to her lawyer. Her lawyer asked how we should handle discovery for the division of assets, to which my lawyer got this shocked look on his face and said, said what division of assets? Read the prenup. The look on her lawyer's face was priceless. She hadn't told her lawyer about the prenup. My late uncle, who was the founding partner of the law firm I use, wrote that prenup and actually hired her a lawyer to look over it for her before we married. According to my lawyer, it's a thing of beauty because we never mixed finances per my uncle's instructions. The house we live in was a gift to me from my uncle before we married. All the utilities and insurances are in my name. All the vehicles are registered in the owner's name only, and we never had to sign for any debt for each other. We have one shared savings account that is used for household maintenance and an emergency fund. There is around $8 in it, which she has already drained. There is less than $300 in it now. The prenup states that all marital assets and debt are to be divided 50 50 in ownership of all intangible assets and personal debt reverts back to the individual who accrued it. The adultery clause simply states that we agree that if either party is caught or admits to committing adultery, they lose the right to claim any form of spousal support. There's a lot more to it than this, but my lawyer assures me that trying to break this prenup will be damn near impossible because it is the most fair prenup he's ever read. But the last thing her lawyer asked for was what has really messed with me. He asked that we postpone the official mediation for six months while my SDBX attends an inpatient rehabilitation facility for substance abuse. Some people in both my last posts stated that she might have a substance abuse issue, but I didn't even think about it because I couldn't even fathom that. I talked to my lawyer and he said that we would discuss it and get back with him about our decision on that. Before we left, my SDBX spoke literally for the first time and asked me to read a letter she had written me. My lawyer gave me that this could be a snake, so be careful look, and I debated with myself for a moment but decided to take it. When I got home, I read it, and now I wish I hadn't. It started off with all those busted cheater platitudes that everyone warned me about. I love you. I love our family. I know I've mistreated our son, and I hate myself for it. I want us again. But she did explain that after a major surgery she had about two years ago, she started abusing her medication. After a while, 
She started buying them from some of the people she worked with, including AP. He became her go-to guy, and when she ran out of money, she started sleeping with him to make up the difference. She said she hid this from me because she was afraid I would make her stop and she couldn't feel right without them anymore, that he meant nothing to her but a fix, and she hates herself for doing what she's done, both to herself and to us. Now she says she understands how awful what she's done is and wants to get better for our family and asks me to at least give her some time to prove she wants this. And let me state for the record, I will never get back with my wife. Our marriage was over the moment she cheated on me and abused our son. But damn, where the F was I while all this was going on? I just feel like the most naive obtuse idiot to ever walk the earth. And furthermore, how should I approach this from here? Am I just throwing her away? Or am I still justified in feeling betrayed? I feel like such a failure as a husband and a father right now. I mean, I feel nothing for her but anger and resentment. But is this how you treat someone fighting the demon she's fighting? More info. I know that she doesn't get the benefit of the doubt anymore, and I can't risk my son's well-being for her anymore. She has to do this on her own. After reading the comments here, I'm wondering if she didn't send me that letter to set herself up so she would have an excuse to keep going down the spiral, so to speak. I was told that not showing compassion is not the same thing as being vindictive. I need to internalize that for myself. Letting her fall isn't the same thing as kicking her when she's down. She has put me in an impossible situation to help her because I cannot risk my son feeling betrayed by me. I am still going through with a divorce, but I may contact her treatment facility to see if I might be able to support her from a distance. I want to support her as a fellow human being and for the love we really did share at one point in time, but my son is my number one priority right now. Also, my lawyer was ready to pop the champagne when I read him her note. He said it's a clear-cut admission of untreated addiction, which pretty much guarantees me full custody.